Right, welcome back, Games of Love fans. We're here for another episode of Play Your Rankings Right. We've got JG's back as well with me. And this week on Play Your Rankings Right, we've got from the Slice Tennis, it's Stephen. How are you doing? Good day, lads. How are you? Little ya? clap. Yeah, little clap. Little cheers. 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 Yeah, we're doing good. I'm, I'm, ready. I'm doing, excited Steven? to play this game. I'm excited to play the game, check out my rankings, knowledge. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous. I don't know how good it's going to be, but I guess it'll be put to the test. So earlier you disclosed that you've watched the previous episode, so you understand a bit about the rules. But just a quick so, yeah. general recap, you just need to pick who you think is higher in the rankings. Obviously, the rankings are frozen at the moment. And yeah. to prevent any, like, you know, you basically, you can't take too long. You've got a seven-second stop clock. Yeah. Any, any questions at all? No, I think it's pretty straightforward. I think it's yeah. pretty good. If you do okay. not hear one of the uh, names that we're reading out, we're, you're allowed one repeat for each particular, well, question. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, if you want to change your answer at any point during the seven seconds, you may do so. But as soon as the seven seconds is up, we need to have had that final answer from you. Yep. Okay. And so far, we've had top of the leaderboard, Wolf, with 10. And yeah. second... With oh, oh second, that second, second with seven, Tweener. Is that Tweener heads with seven? Yeah. yeah. Tween- and Wolf. And Wolf got ten. ten. Is Wolf's name just Wolf, or Wolf, is there anything Wolf else? Gang. Uh, it's Wolf Gang. But yeah, okay. we say Wolf. Yeah. Okay. I got it. So, what is your benchmark? What are you trying to aim for? You got to be that top spot, right? Yeah, top spot. That's what I'm going for, of course. Yeah. How many questions are there total? Fourteen. There's fourteen, and then the last question, fifteen. There's two points on offer. Oh, okay. Beauty. The maximum yeah, score of 60. I'm going 400%. That's my goal, but you know, I just want to be in first place. Sounds good. That's what we love to hear. Well, the rankings haven't moved in a long time, so you've had a lot of time to study it. It's true. It's see, true. How, see how well you studied it. Question one. Who is higher in the rankings? Milos Raonic or Nick Kyrgios? Oh, uh, yeah. That's a good one. Um, I'm going to go with Milos Raonic right now. Oh, locked in there. Locked in with Raonic. I think he's at 29 or 30, and I feel like Milo or Nick has dropped. Okay. I can confirm that is correct. Well Raonic done. is 30, and Kyrgios is 40. <laughs> wow. Look at that. I think my guy... Milos would stick up for for it. I knew it. Uh, as we know, Milos Raonic uh, been playing very well recently. He uh, recently, well, he got to semi-finals, I think, in Delray Beach. But that was yeah. only after a very good running at the Australian Open, where he didn't drop a set on the way to meeting Novak Djokovic, who yeah. unfortunately put him out in straight sets. But it's true. Yeah, we heard about it on uh, yeah your podcast with him where you discussed why Djokovic is such a pain in the backside to play. Exactly, yeah. No, he, he laid it down. There's some good stuff in there from Milos, and uh, I think he's going to get back up. He's really like a top 10 player, I think, when he's playing well. I feel, we had, I feel like we injured. have to start. We had to start with Raonic, because yeah, he's got yeah, an amazing yeah, interview sure. with him as well. So. And my luckily, guy. My guy. He, Thanks, guys. he might come back on again now you got it right. <laughs> hey, you never know. Maybe. <laughs> you know. I'm sure he's watching. He is, I'm sure. Right. So, one out one, good start. Okay. We move on to We're good. question two. Okay. We've got Tennis Sangren and Adrian Manorino. Go. Oh, yes. I think that Tennis here. Sangren is higher. Oh, that's just on the buzzer then. So did I just uh, did I get it just in time? Yeah, it's literally just on the buzzer. Then when I say you're gonna have to rush you, it's literally when you've got one second left. So you just get through it a name. We had tennis sangren locked in. It's the wrong answer, I'm afraid. It's oh, actually Adrian oh, Manorino. That's a tough one. I hey, that was these guys earlier. What are they ranked? Adrian Manorino, number thirty-eight in the world, and tennis sangren. Number 55. It's 55. Yeah. 55. I thought Adrian was way lower. Did uh, Darren, do you ever give any of the uh, little tidbits on either of these two guys? Yeah, well, not much. Obviously, tennis played recently in the uh, 
most recent, like what we see, it's not even recent now, now but uh, Australian Open had a brilliant tournament. Yeah. Come very close to beating Federer. It's a brilliant wow. match, but Federer just dug in and showed why. He's a why he's considered one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. So in your terms, the greatest of all time. The goat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's one for two so far. One for one two. Okay, you know, that's a tough one. Well, I'll be better. I'll be better. So number three, Federico okay. Gallo or Quentin Hales. Oh boy. Go. go. I'm going to say Gallo. It's paused Ooh. in there at four seconds. Was there any reason for that? I think he's just the only guy I can recognize <laughs> out of those two names, to be honest. I feel like I've heard you guys talk about him before. I don't know why. Uh, well, uh, maybe. Let's, let's double check with that. The adjudicator. That is correct. Well done. Well done. Gaio is 130th, and Quentin Howes, there's a French guy, is 194. Yeah, so there's about 60 in it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, well done. Yeah, the that's, gut, two for that's three. the gut instinct right there. Well, we know that uh, Gaio is, uh, well, he has his ups and downs. I think most recently, more downs, unfortunately. He's uh, come a cropper against a few players like uh, Maroni, Dominguez, in a couple of these ch uh, challenger or ATP events over in uh, South America. Uh, but right. as, as we know, Quinton Hale is just more of a hard court man himself. He's one that we've uh, always have our eye on. If he, he normally pulls out a few decent results. He had some uh, good results recently against, uh, is it Matteo Viola and uh, Lucas yeah. Lacco? He managed yeah. to uh, defeat in France. Yeah. But, uh, is that, came, were those in challengers? Yeah, on challengers. He came up short uh, against Ernest Golbis. Uh, oh, who I believe Lord Golbis. Was, of course, uh, Golba. of course he did. Yeah, but Golbis, as we know, he was a challenger winner recently. Against Jersey right. Janovitz. So, yeah. Yeah, that's just a little bit of background on on them. Uh, let's move on to the next it's one. Tough. So, you, two out of three, doing well so far. Yeah. Let's see how two this three, works. Let's go. We've got Ernesto Escobedo and Taro Daniel. Go. I'm going with Escobedo. Ooh, that was quick. Okay. <laughs> Going with Escobedo. I, just look, I think I remember seeing that Taro Daniel was farther, way farther down than I thought he was, but we'll see. Let's check with that. It's incorrect, I'm afraid. Uh, Escobedo, 181 in the rankings. Taro Daniel, uh, surprisingly. Escobedo. 112 in the rankings. So, uh, yeah, Sharon, do you have anything you wanted to say about Yeah, well, um, Taro Daniel, he recently did win an event. I forget which event it was, but he did, he, he come all the way to the final. In and won Australia, it. that was. Uh, down yeah, in Australia. Bernie Challenger. That's correct, Bernie mm. Challenger. So he won that event, so I think he picked up quite a few points from that. I said he didn't drop a set in that whole uh, tournament that he won. That's yeah, no, he's, he's a really good player. Beat Hampman, Safwa in that tournament. Two very, very good players. Because Sav, oh, yeah, Taro Daniel, he beat, he's beaten Djokovic before, right? So we know he's got it in him. He's definitely yeah, one he's to watch. Good. Number right. five. Okay. We have Javier Branco Cazano or Juan Pablo Fikovic. Go. I'm literally shooting in the dark here. I'm going to go with Fikovic. Ooh, Ooh. Locked him with the second left there. Oof. I can confirm that is correct. Wow, well done. Fikovic is 205 think. and Branko 296. So it's about 100 swing. Okay. But yeah. Yeah, the Fikovic is one of those players which uh, Jaron put onto my radar at one point last year when he was just uh, popping up in a few of these challenger events. Uh, and started in the end of the year, he was taking some bigger scalps, getting in some bigger tournaments. Uh, he actually, yeah, yeah he's, I think he lost to the eventual winner of uh, Mega in one of the tournaments in the ATP. But before that, he'd actually taken uh, scalps of Horansky and Pedro Souza in the qualifying, which is, oh, yeah. Pedro, Pedro Souza, we know, is a very, very top uh, clay court player. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, very good player. But uh, so is Javier Barranco Cassano, another, but he's much younger. But he's, oh, one okay. to, sure, yeah. he's one to watch for the future, for sure. Okay. So he's going to put on the radar. 
Yeah, yeah, but he's definitely, he's definitely on the radar. I think he's been Good. just sort of pushing into the uh, challenges. He's won a couple of ITFs, but he's pushing into the challenges and just trying to challenge a bit. Right. So just challenge in the challenges. Terrible. Challenge in the challenges. <laughs> That's right. right. Right, next one up, we've got... Uh, <laughs> uh, if I can get the pronunciation correct for you on this one, we've got Philip Pelliwool. Pelliwool? Oh, yeah. Yeah? That's my guy. He's Canadian. Okay. Yeah, there you go. This is why I thought you'll probably recognize that if I even if I didn't pronounce it correct. And he's against yeah. Max Purcell. Go. Max Purcell. Um, I'm taking Max Purcell. Okay, locked in. It's higher. Let's have a check. It's correct. Well done. Well done. Sorry, Ma Philip, but he's been dropping. Max Purcell. Yeah, Philip Pelo, as you mentioned, is the Canadian guy. But Max Purcell, yeah. he's a bit more experienced, plays at more predominantly a higher level. He's a very good doubles player as well, does well in the mm. doubles. He's uh, the guy who yeah. has the long hat, is that right? Yeah, yeah, he wears the hat and then yeah. he's, got the long, he's got the long, sort of blondish hair. Him and Savile, right. wasn't it, in the Australian Open, look like twins. Him and Savile. I think they got <laughs> all the way right. to the final, yeah. didn't they, Ben? I saw yeah, that, yeah. yeah. The, two, the two Aussie blokes. Yeah, and you couldn't tell them apart, they literally looked identical. They looked like yeah. robots. Yeah, so, yeah Mar Purcell was 216 and Pelo 339. Right. Yeah, Pelo was an interesting guy. He won the junior Wimbledon in like 2012, I think. So, so and then he's, he's had a bit of a rough go of it since then. But like, it's hard to, even from the juniors, you can be really good in juniors. It's hard to make it in the pro still, right? Yeah. Look at uh, the, like we're speaking to Wolf last week. He was saying uh, Taylor Fritz, who he was junior Wimbledon champion. Oh yeah, uh, or, yeah. And then, well, I, he hasn't come close to even getting close to a major yet in his uh, career. But yeah, I'm sure it's yeah. it's not as easy as uh, everybody makes out, is it? And once you're in that, oh, and when you've got up against totally Djok Djokovic from Federer and Nadal, it's a different caliber of uh, player up against. Oh, totally, yeah. It's a whole other ball game. So, that's nice. anyway, that, that leads us on from four to six. Four from six. Four from six. Nice. It's good so far. It's looking good. Looking good. We're approaching, good here. approaching the halfway stage, coming up to the halfway stage. So, number stage. seven. Number seven. And Santiago is... Geraldo. Ooh. Or Jeffrey Blancano. Ooh, go. Geraldo or Blancano. You know, I'm going to go with blank and I'll actually on this one. Oh, locked in two seconds left. What's the reasoning for that? Yeah. Geraldo, I've seen him. I saw his name when I was kind of doing some studying and he was, he was further down than I thought. So I feel like this could be a sneaker. Okay. And it was a sneaker. So you are correct. Oh, it's correct. Well done. Look at him. He's been I know you guys. I know the English guys. I know what they're up to. Well, he's sneak, trying to sneak <laughs> you on some of these selections. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to catch yeah, yeah, yeah. Blancano's 267 and Geraldo's 295. Yeah. You Blancano's... know, Blancano, I've always I've always talked about Blancano. I've said, you know, this guy's this guy's the top ten player if he's playing his best, but he can just unfortunately never play his best. But <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm joking. I've never even heard of that. I've never even heard of that guy to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> he is he is, a, he is one that Jaron put on my radar again. He's is a very he? up and down sort of player though. He's very good on hard court, but I don't know. He goes in spells. He just literally could be winning for like a couple of tournaments and then he'll just have like two or three tournaments on the bounce where he's just playing terrible. So he's quite, no, I think he's quite a good player, but he's kind of at his level right now. Like it's very difficult for him to push yeah. on from where he's How at. How old is he? Um, whew, it's a good question. I think I think he's that old, but I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think maybe <laughs> I'll, I'll put a guess out. I'll say 25. Yeah, I think he's okay. in the early 20s. That's good. If he's in the early 20s, he's still got potential. That's good. Yeah. yeah he's got time for that late surge. The Stanford yeah, Brinkers. That John style. Millman surge. The John Millman <laughs> surge. <laughs> right. So, that one, another correct one there. So, not looking bad. Nice. So it's five of seven. Is it? How was uh, the wolf looking last week when we got to uh, this stage? Well, I, forget, I, think I think it was less than, it was definitely less than seven. I think he was more on about four. I think it was four, four of seven, I think he was, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Right, so you're looking in good stead at the moment. But just a warning: some of them do get a bit more trickier. Yeah, yeah. I think oh. we started you off a bit easy there, giving you some Canadian yeah. ones just so that you, uh, <laughs> yeah, 
No, no but I went won't. against the Canadian in the second one. I know, but that's because you knew where he was in the rankings, see? That's why we... That's right. Smart man. Into. That's it. Yeah. Right, so let's go on to number eight. This one, interesting players. we got Davidovich Fokina. Okay. And Attila Balaj. Go. Oh, jeez. I'm going for Kina. Just because okay. I know who he is, and he's good. It's okay. Locked in. So, let's have a quick check. Don't let me down. Don't let me down for Kina. It's not correct, I'm afraid. Attila Balaj. Shocking. How dare you go it. against Attila Balaj? He's a fan favorite of the podcast. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard of him again. <laughs> what? Heard so, for Kina... Fakina is 97, Attila Balaz 76th in the world. How have I never heard of him when he's 76 in the world? There's people in Hungary name, naming their babies after Attila Balaz. This is how famous is right? he is over in Hungary. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> my that... gosh. I'm like, you know, that, I'll take your word for it. He's Hungarian, hey? Yeah. yeah him no, and... He's a brilliant player, actually. And um, he's been, he's a fan favorite for the podcast. And we've had him on every single episode so far of this. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. For, for whoever's watching this and doing episode four, yeah, geez, you remember no, it. 77, holy crap. That's, yeah, you, they gotta, that's, <laughs> yeah. A key, that's a giveaway right there. He's one of those ones who's been sort of sneaking his way up into the ATP events and then actually taking some scalps in the ATP events, but going under the radar to the people who aren't in the know. Yeah, yeah. like me, apparently. <laughs> that <laughs> leads you five for eight. <laughs> Oh, okay. Right, on to yeah, question nine. On to number nine. JG, take it okay. away. Some Let's more go. familiar faces this time. Yeah. We've okay. got Andrev Rublev. Oh, yeah. And Stan Wawrinka. Go. Ooh. That's a trickster. Um, I'm have to rush I'm it. going with... Time up. Vavrinka. Oh, on the buzzer. Oh, on the Vavrinka. buzzer. That was very close. <laughs> very. You got to, there was a timer for a second there. Yeah, you yeah, can't and that is a time. very tricky one. They're both very familiar players, but I can confirm that that is unfortunately incorrect. Oh, oh my gosh. I swear. <laughs> I thought At, Rublev um, was injured like all of, like half of last year. Andre Rublev is 14th in the world. And oh Sam my Vavrinka gosh. is 17th. Shame yeah. on me. Shame well, on me, I should know that. Don't forget Andre Rublev had that incredible start to the year where he won two ATP events. It's true. Uh, it's true, but like, well, I feel like Stan's been playing pretty decent. Hasn't been winning events, though. No, that's it's true. Point, that's where the point is. But he made, it to, didn't he, he made it to the quarterfinals of the, or the semifinals of the Australian Open. Was it the semifinals? Right? Or the quarters? Yeah. Yeah, no, he, made, got, he got to the latter part, the latter stages of it for sure. He lo yeah. lost to Zverev in the, uh, I think it was the quarters. Yeah, yeah, he made quarters. he made the quarters of the U.S. Open as well. So I don't know. Uh, lost out in Acapulco to uh, Grigor Dimitrov in the third finally, round. Finally, yeah. yeah, Grigor Dimitrov finally got, got over him. But yeah, that's yeah, that's a, that's a good one. That's a tough question. It's okay. Yeah, I'm still hopeful. I'm still hopeful. They get tough to do this, man. That's it. He's, he's, still, he's still in with a chance. You've only got four incorrect so far. And that's out of nine. So, still, yeah. still a chance. So, up next. Okay, so, on for number 10 for Ben. Yeah. Okay. And we've got the Brits coming in here. Kyle Edmund. Oh, <laughs> no, one of your big, uh, big players <laughs> on your podcast. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> 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 and he's, up, he's up against Casper Rude. Go. Oh, uh, you know what? Casper Rude. I'm going with Casper Rude. Oh, he's locked in there after three seconds. Check that. Any reasoning Gotta behind be. that, just in case? Oh, Casper Rude's been playing much better recently as of late. He's had some good results. I think he won a tournament on the clay swing there. Good. And it's correct answer. He did. He is higher in the rankings. Let's go. Thirty-six. He's thirty-six. Sorry, yeah. And who's the other? What's the other? Forty-four one? in the ranking is Kyle Edmund. Yeah. He did win in. Edmund. Didn't he, Jaron? He won in yeah. New York, though, didn't New he? York. Yeah. New York. Yeah. Edmund. Oh yeah, he did win in New York. That was like the weirdest tournament in New York. It's like Even no one was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It wasn't. It was. Too many. And, like. 
Jack Sox said he said that it was um, weird because they're playing and the court was over like an ice rink, like a hockey rink. So it made the ball react really weirdly, apparently. Ah, interesting. I didn't know that. So Edmund's yeah. been campaigning for more. <laughs> More, of course. Yeah, he wants a new rings. surface as of ice. He wants a new surface on the ATP tour. Edmund, Edmund don't need the crowd, though, man. He's not a crowd yeah. player. Nah, yeah, he's not. Doesn't no, play he's actually an energy player. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I think behind closed doors, and he'll be sorted. He'll be world number one. But you was yeah. right about Casper Rudd. He did win a clay court uh, event, yeah, yeah. and he also come. He was a runner-up in one as well, losing to Saboth Wild in the final. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very good con- start to his year. Sad. Good stuff. So that is correct. So that leaves us six with ten. Six out of ten. Okay. Yeah. So number eleven, we've got Go Sueda. Yeah. Versus Elias Weimar. Go. Go. I'm gonna have to take Go Sueda. Oh. What's your reason for that one? You know, he's a player I've I've seen on the rankings a lot, and I feel like he's been hovering. I haven't I don't I haven't really been following the other guy at all. So that's all. That's all I got. You was correct in saying well that. Well done. Well done. I think Let's there was go. a li- little bit of a tried a trick in there because obviously Elias Weimer, the brother of Mikhail Weimer, who is the, probably the better of the two brothers, probably higher in oh, the is rankings. That right? yeah, yeah. So. Uh, okay. Well, to be picking Goseda, Goseda, well, he's an incredible hardcourt player and is closer in the rankings to Mikhail Weimar. Very good on grass as well, Goseda. Yeah. Right. No, yeah, he's a veteran. He's been around for a long time. So, yeah, so he's 117th and Weimar's over 200, 201. Oh, yeah. Beauty. So, exactly. Right. Beauty. So, is that 7 for 11? 7 for 11. 7 for 11. <laughs> so. 7 for 11, but what? Tied, tied with the tween already. <laughs> tied with the tween. Oh, you got seven. Yeah, this is to get yourself off the bottom of the le- of the leaderboard. So That's you right. can... we're going for the top. So here we go. Question twelve. We've got Jack Draper up against Arthur De Grief. Go. On. Oh my gosh, this is, this is rough. You know what? I'm going with De Grief. Oh, he's locked him in. But locked him in. Well, any reason? Oh. I don't know. I feel like I've seen Jack Draper, and I feel like he's not high. I feel like, I don't know. There's not much reason behind that guess, honestly. It's uh, just a guess. Go with my gut. It's the wrong answer, I'm afraid. Jack Draper is actually higher in the rankings. What is he ranked? Jack okay. Draper's 285, and DeGrief is 324. Yeah. So Draper is the, our English hopeful. He's quite a good player. And, uh, oh, he yeah. is English. Yep. Yeah, so he's 285 in the world, and he's he's a very good player, young young guy, and he's got we've got a lot of hope in that the fact that he could become a very good player for us. Yeah, you probably yeah. Miss, you probably missed out. Like uh, you probably weren't keeping an eye on the ITF events. He actually uh, was in the final of one ITF event in Glasgow, lost out to oh, Poul- yeah. Poulain from France, and then he won an ITF event. In uh, Sunderland against Seisling in the final. Wow. So he's been cool. in a f- couple of finals there. That's probably pushed right. him up in the rankings. So you just got to keep so an eye on those ITFs. So Jack Draper, 13. that's a good English name. Jack Draper. I'm lucky for some. <laughs> 13 we have Biersa Basic versus Lorenzo Massetti. Go. I'm going with Basic. Oh, I can locked. confirm that that is incorrect. Ah, oh. shoot. Massetti is the 18 year old and he's 284 and basic 309. Oh, yeah. I'm choking now at the end in the final stages. Yeah, it's uh, tricky. Massetti was. I'm still one. waiting. I'm, I'm, I'm relying on that, on that two point question coming up here. You're doing a tennis sangren right now. <laughs> <laughs> shoot, man, that's savage, but it's true. I am. Um, yeah, Massetti was one that I sort of put onto the radar of Jaron last year when uh, yeah. he was having some incredible clay court form. He's just recently been sort of transferring that over into onto the hard court. Managed to take yeah. out a couple of good players in the qualification for Dubai, which was uh, Donskoy and uh, Popperin as well. Managed to beat both of oh, them yeah. in straight sets. So, yeah, he's, so he's seven on. for 13. Yeah. So, number 14. The f- penultimate question here. Here we go. So we've got Yannick Sinner 
Yes. And Jan Leonard Struff. Go. I think Jan Leonard Struff's higher. It's got to be. Him it's locked him in. Right. I actually right. That's correct high answer. High. Well done. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. And there's actually quite a big gap between them. Sinner's yeah. 73rd and yeah, Struff's 34th. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I knew Sinner was in the 70s because I knew like all the hype is about Sinner. He's like, to me, the biggest prospect on the tour. Yeah. But uh, Struff's been around for a while and he's been having Yeah. Success. Like you said, Sinner's a heavily sort of um, hyped up player. People yeah. expecting big things. Very young guy. Um, mm-hmm. He's yet to prove some, as much yet. He's been, obviously, he's done an exceptional, but I think we're going to see a lot more from him in, in future years coming up. Yeah, I think he's, he's like 17 or 18. But what I saw at the next gen finals, what he did to those players with my eyes, that's, that's <laughs> all I had to see. Like, unbelievable talent. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's very exciting to watch as well. So that leads us to 8 for 14. That's okay. Cool. Coming on to the final question. Yeah, you okay, can take so the last with this one. final one, you've got twenty seconds for this question. Yes. And there's okay. only one person we're asking. You're not you're not comparing there's no two players on this one, it's just the one guy. What we're asking is what ranking is this player? And oh we'll my give gosh. you plus five or minus five. Or minus five? Yeah. Yeah. You can be either so, above or below. So for oh, example, okay. if he was fifth in the rankings, you can say yeah. one or ten and it's all yeah. correct. Anything between that. Okay. Are you ready for the answer? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so just to, to, for the points, if you get it exactly bang on, you get two points. Okay. If you get it within the boundary, anywhere in the boundary, you get the one point. Okay. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Let's go. Where in the ranking is Francis TFO? Go. Go. He is 81. Final answer? That is my f- no, no, 82. 82. That's your final answer. That's my final answer. Sure. You want to lock- sure you're locking in? Is the time gone yet, Ben? 81 or 82? We've got like a 82. few seconds left. I think it's 82. Okay. Locked in at 82. Tell me, what is it? We have some terrible news. Oh. It's the only that it is 81. Oh ah, my gosh, no way. So <laughs> within the boundary, he changed his mind. Trust your gut. Trust your gut. Yeah. We tried to, we tried to try to give it back to you so many times. I know, I well. felt like you guys were doing that, but I felt... Oh, I thought how I thought how photographic is this guy's memory? He's obviously seen eighty one. He said, and he's just he said eighty one like instantly. I that was like, incredible, man. I was like, this wow, is why I can't. This is why I can never be on the ATP tour because I always second guess yourself. You know, you just gotta trust your instinct and just go for it. And I had eighty one, and then I changed it. This is what it makes this change. one tough because we don't just take your first answer on this game. We allow you to. Yeah, give it another shot because we had on the last week's one, he got it wrong and he changed it and he got yeah. it right within the last second. Yeah. So, yeah, it's right? wow. in your benefit. But you got still got yeah. one point and you so still anyway, you get the one point for that and that gives you Not nine bad. out of 15. So, well done. Right. Hey, you know, I took you, so that puts me in second place overall. Second on the yeah. leaderboard. Well done. Okay, well. <laughs> you know that's not that's not so bad that's I, i'm happy with that you know you can't always win but uh, i'm happy with that i'm just happy i beat tweenerhead that's all that's all i care about <laughs> so anyway how did you did you enjoy it i did it y'all totally it's uh it, it shows me that i need to pay attention more to the to the lower ranked guys and i'm happy to rely on the game to love podcast to keep me informed on those players when they come up and yeah with all this extra time that's what i should be doing anyway so i gotta well. get with it the rankings aren't moving anytime soon. So it's true. Everybody, if you're playing at home, just keep your eyes, do a bit of revision, and then you might be able to get full marks on the next edition of Play Your Rankings Right. It's true. It's getting easier, technically. It's, yeah, it is. Every episode, it gets a little bit easier. <laughs> That's right. No, anyway, thank you for coming on, Slice. Steve. Yeah. No, thank you guys for having me, uh, Jaron and Ben. It was a great time, as always, and a uh, great game show. I loved it. I'll try and do better maybe in the future. I don't know. That was yeah, not too bad. We'll have to get you on another nine, time for sure. You, so don't be too harsh on so yourself. You did quite well, man. There's some good ones you yeah. got and you sort of noticed some of our little tricks. Uh, yeah. For you guys watching at home, make sure you leave your marks in the comments and let us know what you got. Uh, yes. Tell us your thoughts on this episode, what you think of Stephen. 
Do you think he did well? <laughs> think he could have done better? <laughs> Just let us know. Yeah. Uh, don't be too harsh on him. Yeah. But anyway. Don't be too harsh. Yeah. <laughs> they are. Steven, if you've got any, uh, if you want to promote your channel again, go for it. Yeah, well, just this next week, we're doing a uh, Coaches Week on our Instagram. So the Slice Tennis on Instagram. There's going to be some good Instagram lives there. But, you know, check us out. Brilliant. Nice. We've got right. less than a minute, so we better wrap this up. Thanks, thanks for listening, guys. And peace. Yeah, thanks for having us. <laughs>